Hi folks, Paul from Modcon here. My latest video subject is Special Hobbies Fokker D2 kit in 30 second skill. I started by putting the cockpit floor and side frames together. This is quite a basic layout, but there won't be much to see when the fuselage is closed up anyway. The rear horizontal and vertical arms of the frames will need sanding thinner on their outside edges to allow the fuselage to close properly later in the build. There is a seat and fuel tank, although a few other small parts are included in this section as well, and the engine was also assembled at this stage. Some of these smaller parts are seen here, and include the control column and a small piece of forward framing with what I think may have been a compass attached. Next up, the engine was test fitted inside the cowling, and there were no problems with this arrangement. The engine is pretty basic to put together, but it actually shows up rather well once it's painted and fitted into the model. The wings are nicely detailed, but on my kit had a noticeable upward curve towards the tips, and I elected to remedy this by immersing the parts in hot water and manipulating them until they were in neutral. They should be straight when seen from the front. Please remember to use gloves to protect your hands for this routine. I also removed the tab connecting the lower wing and replaced this with a length of brass rod, which improved stability and strength. So in the next section of video, you'll see the pilot seat getting painted with oil paint over an enamel undercoat, to which a cushion was made to replace the somewhat unconvincing kit part and the painting of the cockpit floor was also undertaken at this time. Thereafter, some views of the completed engine and the full cockpit assembly. So here I have managed to close up the fuselage, fill in the space for the lower wing insert using plastic card and filler around a centrally placed brass rod. Once happy with that, the brass fret parts representing the underside stitching were attached, using super glue sparingly at the front and end areas and then coated with crystal clear to hold the rest of the frame in place. This was only a light coat and any excess was quickly removed with a damp cotton bud. The engine and cockpit were covered over in preparation for the beginning of the colour scheme. And in this section here, some work has been done on the main undercarriage legs ahead of their assembly. And here now, the wings, tailplane, rudder and wheel hubs have been given an undercoat of white. And then the focus moved back to the fuselage again, which by this time had also received a white undercoat after some small brass pieces and adhesive tape had been added. 
the latter representing the cowling band, which was made from one millimetre thick adhesive tape. And finally, in this last section prior to starting the paintwork, the wings and horizontal tail received their rib tape covers. And now the painting can begin, and I started by applying lighter shades to the undersides. So, the kit has now had its undersides on the wings, tailplane and fuselage painted in this light linen shade, which will be further lightened as the process continues. And here are those sections coming up now, starting with the fuselage. After this, the next job will be to paint the upper surfaces of the model. The wings and tail will have a dark green and red brown camouflage pattern, while the forward fuselage will have two shades of dark green, and the rear areas will be painted white with stripes applied behind the fuselage cross. The rudder is a little more unusual in that the colours are inverted, with the rudder being black and the national marking white. And now showing the wheels. They had the linen shade painted on their inner hubs and white on the outer the latter being the background to black crosses, which had apparently been adopted by this unit as their emblem. The upper wing carried the national marking on a white background, and these two areas were covered over so that the undercoat remained white, and the camouflage could begin to be applied. You'll be able to see these areas blanked off in a few moments' time. And indeed, I think this is them coming up now. Yes, here we go. And in a few moments, you'll see the beginning of the upper surface camouflage being applied 
starting with the dark green shades. And now the application of the red-brown on the upper surfaces and this will be followed by the shading of the underwing rib tapes.
In this next stage, the same shading process was applied to the upper surfaces and then on both surfaces, the reducing of the staining could begin. This admittedly being a clearer process on the lighter under surfaces. For anyone concerned about the uneven application of the shading over the rib tapes, this is deliberate, as I feel that once completed, it adds to the sense of wear and tear, and the reduction of the staining is more random and therefore produces a better end result. And of course, I should also have mentioned that after removing the rib tapes, the paler linen shade I made was first applied over the exposed ribs to remove their stark white appearance. After this paint layer had dried, one final very light linen shade was applied and the same process was done on the upper surfaces using the relevant camouflage colours. And coming up now, some photos of the end result of all that work. I was very pleased with how things turned out, despite having to do a little remedial work on the upper fuselage. On the fuselage sides, I decided to replace the upper black stripe transfer with a painted red band, as there is a possibility that these stripes reflected the German national flag at the time. The imperial flag was black to red from top to bottom, but having seen both a pretty clear photo of the Satchel aircraft and a coloured plate of its possible scheme, I thought the red was certainly a more eye-catching finish. To apply the red stripe, I attached some adhesive tape to the fuselage sides, making sure as best I could that they were properly pressed down into position and therefore less likely to allow the paint to bleed underneath it. Then two or three light coats were applied from the tape inwards, therefore again reducing the likelihood of bleeding. And this is the process you see now. I have to admit up front <laughs> that there was some bleeding at the front end of the strip, but nothing that couldn't be carefully removed without any detrimental effect to the rest of the paintwork.
and in a moment you'll see the removal of the tapes and just how the painting turned out. So unlike the wings, struts and tail surfaces, the undercarriage was a bit problematic as you can see here and the horizontal spar was eventually replaced using plastic tubing with some description of metal core which proved to be much more accommodating. Rigging was applied, the wheels and a few sundry items were attached and the build was complete. So finishing up now, some views of the completed model and a turntable view as well. Thanks very much for looking in. If you like what you've seen, please hit the subscription button and I'll catch you all again soon. Until then, take care. Cheers. Bye.